Previously on Alicia Rising. I have a job for you. We have reason to believe that these pillars have been procuring illegal contraband, and we wish you to relieve them of it. Aaron, would you care to explain? That was my old mentor. It's probably not a wise idea that we get on her bad side. You recognize this sprite as Odal Merce Aran. He's the guild master of the largest guild in the pillars. We have a counter proposal. There was one of our own, very, very successful, made a lot of money. I propose that instead of raiding our supplies, you target the inventory of one Caleb McNulty. I, uh, I don't like to talk about my past very much. Personally, I would like nothing more than to see the worst come to that man. Even if we were successful, but Dorothea was to find out at a later date, there would be repercussions from that. However, if it means she gets something that she wants, and you also get something that you want, then I'm fully in heart for it. So yes, let's do it. Welcome to Elysia, the jewel of the North. On our gilded streets, fortune and fame can be found by anyone. Hi, I'm Julia, and I'm playing Magpie, an ace of our lurk. Hi, I'm Nate, and I'm playing Cavern, a dragon scent slide. Hi, I'm Meg, I'm playing Frida, a wolfkin cutter. Hi, I'm JC, and I'll be playing Algernon, an ace of our spider. Hello, I'm Errol, I am playing Atta, a goblin whisper. And my name is DM Dan. I will be the games master on this adventure. So come on in and marvel at our wonders. Make sure you see the beautiful views we have to offer. And don't mind the ghosts. They're friendly, really. Grab yourselves a seat and make yourselves welcome in the city of Elysia. Welcome back to Explorers of Elsewhere's Elysia Rising campaign. Welcome, hello, I am DM Dan, and these are our beautiful and well-established <laughs> players. Sorry, I'm eating a cornetto. <laughs> I'm eating fish fish. Well-fed, <laughs> well-fed players. Um, I've just had some Ferrero Rocher. <laughs> <laughs> we are getting bougie up in this. Uh, so, um, yeah, let's kind of pick up where we left off. So, you have uh, been blackmailed into a job by Dorothea who is uh, Cavern's uh, kind of rival and ex-mentor um, and you've had a counter-proposal from Odal Merce Aran, the de facto leader of the Pillars faction um, to not do that job um, and to do a different <laughs> one instead um, Could you not? <laughs> could you not? Um, yes, to redirect your attentions towards um, a uh, a stockpile for one Caleb McNulty, um, who just so happens to be uh, a important figure in Frida's history, uh, her ex kind of workhouse owner um, and religious nut. And you've you've decided that you're going to go you're going to go with Odal Merce. You're going to follow up with the pillars rather than follow through with the faith. Um, so with a new kind of destination a new objective in mind um let's go with uh let's go with algernon what's algernon doing to gather some information if any um i think if the other people want to go and have a recce at the safe house i'm just gonna go and have a chat with my boy fairfax bring him a portobello mushroom yeah and uh, <laughs> see if he's got any blueprints for me sure 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 um okay so uh it's the same kind of uh, almost rehearsed chit chat um, in Abbot's Gate as you sit down on the park bench during his lunch break. Jolly boating weather. <laughs> yes, um, he like you. You make light chat as he uh, unfolds his uh, pack lunch, and it's the same kind of like you, you wonder who cooks at home 
because he all whenever you see him he's always seeming to be eating the same kind of mush for lunch um it's just like a gruel um but as you hand him the address uh that's been given to you by odelmurse um are you consorting i'm consorting you're consorting okay consort away <clears throat> yay hey, hey you do it okay so um, two for two two for two okay we fast forward a little bit and you meet fairfax at the end of the working day and he provides you a blueprints for the address that you've um given him an address for as you unroll it um and it kind of clearly lays it out so um this was once uh, the building was once a bakery with a um like a sub relatively substantial underground kind of storage area um and there's also a note that um there was like for like planning permission uh, it, it was is remarkable actually it was one of the the only genuine requests that was sent into us for months um but it is a request to effectively kind of put in a like knock out a supporting wall um and they had to get permission in case like the street collapsed um but yeah the permission was granted appropriate structural beams were put in place so it seems that these uh, like there's an addendum uh, addendum to the the original blueprints uh, which shows that um yeah the basement has been extended uh do you have any follow-up questions pleasure as always fairfax good to see you yes, hope everything's okay at home well uh he he looks he sort of like happily pats the portobello mushroom he's got in his hand that you gifted him earlier um this will certainly iron over the any wrinkles that have have cropped up over the past few days oh i'm so sorry to hear about your wrinkles fairfax <laughs> he he sort of like chortles to you he gives you a pat on the back and then he like with the most pep in his step that you've seen in quite some time he uh he he begins heading home whistling as he goes cradling this portobello mushroom Cute. cavern how are you, is there any information you're gathering mm. um cavern is gonna go to frida mm. and um and say like i guess you're gonna be the best one to know as much information as possible so what what can we get from him where does he i don't know when was the last time you saw Caleb, but when you know where does he like to frequent where does he like to go who does he usually hang out with you know what sorry just i'm just gonna jump in if you're asking the question and given frida given that caleb is part of your kind of backstory but you i mean you've not really kind of you've not been keeping up with caleb particularly have no you, i i think my i would have known him until I was probably in my sort of late teens, early 20s, and that's when I would have finally left the factory floor and sort of escaped, as it were. Um, well, um, in Nate, what's what's Cavern, like, based off the information that you're going to get from Frida, because I'm, mm -hmm. I'm thinking in this moment, like, doing, like, a consort or a re uh, an, a, not research, um, a, a study and, like, Frida is your point of knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> that might end up being like a, a handy. So what what were you planning on doing with whatever whatever information Frida's going to give you? Um basically trying to find out where he may sort of hang out besides from obviously where the safe house is or mm -hmm. the kind of people he because obviously he's been he's been ousted by the pillars and he's mm -hmm. been ousted by the church as well. So it's finding out who he's hanging out with, basically, and where we can get more information. Okay. Where his vices lay. Mm. Okay. I yeah. I if you're happy um, to fundamentally use Frida as your point of reference, I'm uh, unless you've got a, an alternative, I'm happy. It'd be, it'd be, I think it'd be good to do a consort or a study mm -hmm. or something along those lines. I can do a consort. Yeah. yeah. You consort with Frida to probe her mind. Let's have a little go. Oh. Da, 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 da. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, I'm happy to start a clock called Retaliation. Ba like, whatever information that Frida perhaps gives Cavern, Cavern, you try to follow it up. Um, you come up, um, like, you, you don't really get any new information from it, but your snooping has been noticed. So there are forces that are now actively moving against you. Ooh. Okay. Uh, okay. So, um, Atta, <laughs> did you want to jump in or did you want to see if Magpie's doing something first? Are you going to go to Rookridge or to Abbot's Gate, Magpie? What? Sorry, what's in Abbot's Gate? The church, uh, where we need to deliver the thing. So uh, we need to kind of right. find out. Oh, right, because my, my thoughts were two things. So one, um, ch casing Rookridge, and two, having enough information on um, Odelmerce's place that we were meant to be stealing from, so that if we are questioned by um, Dorothea later, we've got the answers and it's, ob it's not obvious we didn't go. Yeah, because well, I have um, been thinking maybe they would watch us. But... Odal Merce is quite, you know, he's happy for us to stay in contact, so sort of details we could get directly from yeah, him. I think that's probably a good idea. So that's, yeah. yeah, we'll get those details direct from him. So yeah, it would be casing the uh, Caleb's place in Rookridge, I think. Okay. Uh, so is that someone, Magpie, did you want to, uh, what are you doing, like a... Uh, not stealth. Um, a um, prowl. prowl. A prowl. That's the so one. So you're going to prowl the streets of Brookridge. I'm going to prowl the streets. The street. The streets. The streets of <laughs> Brookridge. Yes, I kind of want to know about this area and the, the building specifically. Okay. Um, but I don't want to be particularly noticed. Sure. I'm going to say before Magpie leaves the door, mm. Reader just pulls her aside and uh, hands her a bundle of clothes. I think you're gonna need these. You're uh, you're gonna stick out like a sore thumb there, even in your civvies. Oh, very well. And what kind of clothes have you handed me? Oh, they're raggedy. They are Ooh. raggedy and they smell. And you know they, yeah, they are proper. Level they are street one urchin. starter gear. <laughs> level one. <laughs> if level one starter gear, like I don't know, got dragged around on the back of a cart horse for mm -hmm. a couple of hours. Magpie sort of looks at this pile you've shoved into her hands and goes, um, where did you get these? <laughs> uh, you don't want to know, but uh, oh, the really uh, do, original actually. owner no longer has requirements for them. Just don't think about it too much. Mm. Have you got anything cleaner? No, no, you don't no. want cleaner, trust me. And also take out those nice earrings, otherwise they'll be half finished before you can even say, hey, Fine, fine. And she takes them out and goes off with her stinky clothes. So, um, what, what was it, Errol, you were going to say? Oh, well, if you want a reason to be going there, you could go get your clothes washed at the washers and see if the seamstresses are gossiping. Mm -hmm. Asher is absolutely right on Needle Lane. Um, washers, tailors, and seamstresses mm. congregate on that street, filling the alleyway between the buildings with their billowing fabrics of their trade. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's a lot of loose lips between uh, those working women, you've heard. Uh, what kind of gossip am I going for, though? Because I, I saw it more as a checking out the building and stuff like that. Yeah. In ingress, egress, mm -hmm. like things like that. Well, yeah. the place we're going is this old bakery. Um, so it, w it would help to know if there was any like, if there's any people living there or working mm. there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. Okay. I mean, you Maybe could I'll... do between Asher and Magpie if you both wanted to head to Rookridge. Yeah, one could do I think one it might be nice to go together. I can offer to maybe fix some of the sewing machines. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Um, like a plan. In which case, Atta, uh, 
yeah, as you head to Needle Lane, um, yeah, it's this long, kind of winding um, alleyway, and you know there are drapes hanging between the the second, like the upper stories of all the buildings on either sides. Um, you can see lots of, um, well, like lots of seamstresses kind of kind of squatting on boxes, just kind of furious, like it's just like a, a street of industry. Like, it's just fascinating just watching them all kind of work. And they're not, they're seemingly like not paying attention to what they're doing. They're just like talking to everyone either side of them and like shouting down the alleyway. Being like, oh, have you heard that? Oh, yeah, yeah. I heard he did this for a while. And then just, <laughs> yeah, just plowing away. Um, but yeah, if you're offering your repair services, um, yeah, by all means, roll me a tinker, I assume. Mm. Yeah, that's what I was angling for. <laughs> Just get in real good with all those seamstresses <laughs> yeah. and get them okay. to give me pants. Right, what is these? <laughs> that what kind of? Um, uh, if you just do a risky standard, because it's just the the okay. result we're looking for. Hmm. Okay. Oh. Oh, yeah. oh boy. Um. Oh so, <laughs> you are. Mm -hmm. Atta, when you arrive on the street and like you stride in the middle of the biggest group and you're like uh, and you announce your repair services the street goes quiet and like mm -hmm. all eyes look at you all of the shouting and sort of like happy chattering turns to like suspicious whispers um and you are like you are fundamentally like cr like crushingly blanked by all these by all these mm -hmm. seamstresses um they just sort of like they look at you for a while you know if there was a honky tonk piano it would have stopped playing and then there's an awkward few minutes and then you're just sort of like as you slowly walk away you can hear the the hubbub begin to build back up um you're not part of the inner circle, unfortunately. The retaliation clock goes up. Oh, bum. Uh, Julia. That's not what we like. That's not what we like, Dan. Magpie. Um, Stop it. <laughs> are you stalking the... Are you scouting yeah. the... Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Prowl. Don't let me down, Prowl. <laughs> it's just one of those nights. Oh boy! <laughs> one out of two. Two. Okay. Just look at those last three. Last three rolls. Uh, a two, two, a two, wanna, one, and a two, one. And they want to push themselves, maybe. I mean, you always resist. <laughs> yeah, I think. That's I a, do. That's, sorry, that's a that's a good point. Yeah. Did um, Atta, did you want to resist uh, the the blanking? Did you want to push push the issue? <laughs> just shouting in the streets. I'm really good at it, honest. <laughs> just be like oh very, everything. very socially unaware of the blanking and be like, they must have gone really quiet because I'm so impressive. Um yeah, why not? I mean okay. Okay. nothing 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 more worse can happen, can it? I don't know. Whatever. It's a game. <laughs> We're playing a game. You can take so much stress you become traumatized, but apart from that. If no, I've got one. You're safe. You're safe. You're safe for this. Never okay. look at the sewing machine again. Uh, amazing. In which case, Atta, uh, if you can roll me a single die. Um, sorry, this is a. No, big pun, not single dice. Uh, tinker, so it's an insight. Uh, so two dice resist off your insight. And I just and roll. Okay. Yeah, that's it. And then this is. Oh. Okay. Okay. So Ooh, look you at that. gain. No stress. Way. Um, as you stomp your foot down, and you're like, nope. <laughs> um, and you, like, whilst. You well, one of my character to... traits is the old ladies really like me. Do you remember? Way back when? <laughs> That's the true. You make were... the old ladies remember they like you. I... <laughs> okay, I will, given that you reduced it completely, uh, I'm going to remove those two pips from the retaliation clock um as you like after a very rocky uh icebreaker uh you manage to warm them up enough that they they won't really talk about the streets 
Um, but at least they won't talk about you either. Okay. Um, and sorry, yes, Magpie. Uh, so, mm. you... You scope out the location. And it's it's difficult to be discreet because everything's so kind of like cramped. So to kind of like you can stand like a few you know streets like a, a street away or something and see kind of passing traffic, but like to see what's really kind of going on, you effectively almost have to be like peering through the the, the mm. boarded up windows and the like. And as you're as you're kind of looking, trying to see who's coming, who's going, like see if there's any familiar, like faces that you can commit to memory, you hear. Could I help you? And behind you... Oh, boy. ...is a tall, portly, older Lorifar. <sighs> Across the left-hand side of his face, there is tattooed religious like scripture. And covering his right eye is a prominent symbol of iron. Mm. As you glance down, like as you oh, take a few steps back instinctively, um, and like your eyes just kind of clock the entirety of him, you notice that hanging from his belt is a coiled whip and what looks like a blood stained truncheon. What are my options for resisting what's about to happen to me? <laughs> um. <laughs> This well, is very you, bad. Yeah, you take a, a few steps back and, like, the man looks at you with sort of, like, his eyes, his Those stare are absolutely, is absolutely, absolutely insane eyes he's got. And, like, they're bloodshot and, like, his pupils are tiny. They're far too small for what they should be. But, like, he stares at you without, like, like he's just, his shoulders rise and fall uh, with his heavy breathing. And such he repeats, a nice guy. Can I help you? Uh, right. So, what are my options here, Dan? Because um, if I were to resist that consequence, what is the best you could give me? So, <laughs> it seems like he's really well. He's really up in his up in your grill, and perhaps mm -hmm. if you were to resist, yeah. um, you might be able to slink away without him really paying you much attention. Sure. But Rather right than now, he's wondering. Holy... Like, you realise you've been caught right red-handed. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like to resist, please. Okay, you can resist. I don't like this. Okay, so it's six. Six. Okay. Um, in which case, under this withering stare from this hulking slab of a man, um, you just sort of, like, duck I your head. melt you into the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Into the shaft. Melted to the floor. Um, <laughs> no. Yeah, you just sort of like, oh, sorry. And like, you, you kind of uh, instinctively bring your hood up and like hide your face and just scurry sorry, away. Sorry, sir. And just scuttle off. <laughs> up. Homer Simpson into the hedge, kind yeah, of. Okay. Like, mm. so whatever I can do to get away from this man. Yeah, so that's, that's fundamentally it. You kind of, you break away from this deranged looking man. Um, and as so you go... Deranged. As you go, you can hear him like muttering something like under his breath. It Sorry. sounds like he's reciting doctrine. That's the great Caleb McNulty. He's a kook. You like as you make your way back through the streets to escape, it you kinda get the feeling. You can't shake the feeling that you have just come face to face with this absolute lunatic that Frida has described to you um, and like what the picture that Frida has painted of you pales in comparison to what you've just witnessed the ink on his face looks relatively fresh and it looks like he's carved it into his own face himself whoa I'm definitely going to ask Frida if he's that bad when she last saw him <laughs> or if he's gone downhill because <laughs> that's not good um, but yeah, as you've reduced uh, your stress by six, I'm going to leave the retaliation clock uh, where it is as well. Okay, um, You've got the blueprints, so you know that the... the well, you've got the blueprints, and um, 
Who else did stuff and things? Uh, so Algonon aced it. Yes, Ether? Yes, Sarah? I was going to see if I can go to Abbot's Gate and find out whether there is any big, like, what are the schedules of the religious services for the Cathedral of Our Mother Saviour? Are there going to be big crowds at certain times? Sure, sure, sure. Um, maybe do, do, does art go to and from, like, the art area into the cathedral? I guess I'm trying to figure out how we can get it into the cathedral a little bit, like, once we've got it. Sure. Um, if I am, I, am I able to help in any sort of way? Because I feel like Cavern may know if he spent time with the church. He may know or have yeah. an idea. Yeah, that's fair. So you can help for one stress, and you add a die. So you can push yourself for, for extra dice as well. There you go, have an extra die. Oh, okay. thank you. I'm going to try and study. <laughs> um, oh, just regular risky standard? Or... Yes, yes. Uh, I would, actually, in this instance, I would say uh, controlled standard, because... Like, if, if you're studying, presumably you're going in and you're just, like, asking the questions, you're looking at, like, the the itinerary of being the heir. You're being a tourist, which is kind of what Abigail... Like, there are tourists in Abbot's Gate, you know, comers. Yeah, the only thing that might be useful is trying to figure out, like, what goes in and out of the church. Like, what goods ever goes in and out of the church, and I don't think I'm the best person to talk to people about those kinds of things so sure but i'm happy to just figure out the schedule yeah okay um in which case yeah if cavern's cavern's helping so if we imagine that cavern perhaps is asking like asking the questions and you're looking at the like the timetables and the like uh that'll be, that'll be the help um so yeah but go ahead roll me a help are you pushing yourself yeah why not sure <laughs> so i get two two extra dice two stress yeah and two extra dice. oh okay Ooh, okay. Um, so you know what? So what time are you looking for? Like when it's not busy, or when there's a crowd? Like, are you looking for like when they're in sermon, when they're not in sermon? Like I'm mostly. So I guess it's both. So when it's quieter, and also when it's busy. But I'm wondering if when it's busy. Like, if there's going to be a service and there are offerings and people are carrying big bags of potential offerings or, like, have extra stuff with them to bestow. Yeah. Is that the nature of this kind of religion or is it more austere? There, there's a lot of pomp. Um, you, like, you kind of do a, yeah, like a, a garth, um, like, hmm. fist pump because uh, tonight... There is, as a community thing, um, there is like a, a food donation drive uh, where the, the, the church, um, like, come listen to the scripture, give food so we can distribute it to those in need. Um, so you know that there's going to be groups of people handing stuff over. So yeah, if you were to arrive with, say, a crate or a chest or something, go, here you go. Yeah, Filled with empty tuna. Well, m like... Just printouts of mushrooms on the top. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, cool. Okay. Uh, any other info? Or are you ready to get going? We need to get going, I think. Do the lots yeah, of, yeah, lots yeah, of events. Okay. Yeah, okay. Right. So, um, who is the spear of the tip of this spear? How are you approaching this job? So, you know the layout, you know the location. Um, magpie you know you have got a print like you give the description of who you <laughs> saw to frida and frida's like oh yeah that was that was caleb yeah um so you know who to avoid <laughs> okay um but how how are you going in like you you're not you haven't been able to find out what's inside mm. um but like do you want to go in loud and proud do you want to socialize your way in do you want to sneak in um how are you doing this i think there's two ways mm. depending on what way we do it is because i reckon frida's gonna be recognizable mm -hmm. 
Mm. So whoever is working with with Caleb, because you know he's an odious man, and not a lot of people would willingly work with him. So the ones mm. that do willingly work with him have been working with him for a long time. Um, so they would recognise Frida. So we could do this in two ways. We could mm. either go sneaky, sneaky, but I'm gonna have to either hang back or be like you know super super careful mm -hmm. or since i am recognizable mm -hmm. we could walk in the front door mm. and i could we could use the fact that i am well known to the advantage it's a bold move it's a bold move mm. it's bold and the word would probably get back to caleb that you'd been there wouldn't it well i'm kind of maybe even banking on that. Caleb and I didn't exactly part on best terms, as you can imagine. I found a little loophole in his uh, organisation and I managed to get out a lot sooner than he would have liked. I know that given half the chance, he would have kept me around for a lot longer and would have probably used my certain skills for his own means. I could go back looking for a job. I could play to his ego, make him think that he has the opportunity to regain that control over me. We could use that as a way in. Yeah. So that'd be a social entrance? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Appreciate like bargain and persuade. But I am also, you know, I... I can't say I'm thrilled at the prospect of seeing that man face to face again. So if if anyone's got better ideas than I am, I am open to to anything. The only other information we have is about the basement and this potential extension that was constructed. There might be a way in, or if it was a bakery, there might be like a lift or a chute for flour to come in and out or product to be moved down into the basement. Um, that would be a stealthy entry point, but I do really like, I do really like having Frida sort of go back to McNulty as a as a con woman. Mm. That sounds cool. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, if we're all in favour, who's joining Frida? And she makes first contact. Frida, dear, I'm I'm happy to join in. However, you want me to join in. I mean, I've been getting training from Magpie to be a little bit more stealthy so i'm happy to hang back and help her but if you need me actually I can join you Catherine, i i think i've got an idea Ooh, intriguing and it'll uh it'll take some of your disposition shall we say i'm all is <laughs> so so that I don't have to do the accent and I can talk a bit quicker. Um, <laughs> my idea is if I go to Caleb directly and sort of make this humble plea to return to the fold, as it were, and to essentially beg for work and say, you know, something along the lines of like the last 10, 10, 15 years that I've had on the streets has not has not been kind, that, you know, I never should have... have you know, never should have left, and that that you know all of his teachings were right. And then maybe because of his religious fervor, if I have found the light of the church, and Cavern can provide legitimacy to that, if okay. if I can sort of go to Caleb and be like, I've I've seen the light, I've seen the error of my ways. I see the I see the value in in hard work to find one's purpose and I want work and I have found the light through my you know through this dragon scent who has shown me the way and con him that way and go go in that's that's the plan you could also be like um your former like employees with the chain bearers they're going to come for your arcane shit in this old bakery so you need some extra security oh okay. do you want you, you want him to put you there yeah okay mm. yeah all right okay. okay 
Uh, where are um, Magpie Bullshit, and Atta? but I like it. <laughs> where are Magpie I, and Atta? I quite like the idea of Magpie and Atta working together because Atta is very good at identifying like arcane stuff and kooky kooky stuff. Um, so you'll probably be a good set of eyes to have on the actual stealthy <clears throat> pinching the items bit of the mission, I suspect, if that fits with yeah. the overall plan. So are you on site going in? Yes. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, Algonon, where are you going to be s situated? Hmm. In Cadwallader Manor, p pouring over the, <laughs> the blueprint? <laughs> Maybe. I mean, there's only so much pouring you can do on a blueprint. <laughs> um, I would quite like to be closer to the action Okay. on this one. Um, in the keel hall, perhaps? Yeah, let's let's go uh, get kill hauled. <laughs> Hub of inflation. Okay, yes. wonderful. In which case, the four of you, uh, Magpie, Atta, Cavern, and Frida, you arrive in like two parties, if you will, two groups. Um, so Frida and Cavern, you're fundamentally going in through the front door, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Oh boy. Roll me an engagement roll. Uh, so you can do that from the dice on the left and we're gonna say so it's one base you know what based off your successes which was the blueprints and knowing the timings over at Abbot's Gate I don't think there's anything here that's gonna help you out that said, your successes were nullified, so there's nothing working against you, but it is a straight one dice roll. Okay. Uh, remind me how to do an engagement roll. It's been a while. Uh, so, two dice on the far left? Oh, yeah. I can't see them. I... Oh, wait, there they are. There we go. Engagement. Engagement, one dice. Oh, okay. <laughs> wait! Oh, five! That's very good. Okay. In oh. which case, when you so you're stood outside okay. this this bakery, and when I say bakery, we're talking like street bakery, so it's rel it's not like a, a bakery factory or anything. Um, it's a relatively small lot, uh, based off what Algonon's told you. You know that there's kind of more space underneath, like presumably in the basement. Um, and as you like, you walk up to the door. The, the the window pane on the door is boarded over, as are most of the other windows. So the house, fu the building, ha fundamentally, looks abandoned. Um, and Frida, are you knocking or are you just pushing? I um, never went for subtlety. Let's just push. Okay. So the door swings open, um, letting the kind of the purple gloom fill the room that like f fill the room in front of you and it looks like um like a, a bakery store shop front so there's kind of displays in front of you and to your left uh the doors kind of on the right hand corner of the room um and there's a door in the far corner leading presumably to some sort of like back area maybe a kitchen or, or some sort um and as you push open the door and kind of step in the two of you um you notice like from the doorway opposite a rather dishevelled Lorivar woman <gasps> turns to look to you, and she's slightly hunched, and like her hands immediately come up to her, like come up in a defensive kind of manner, and like she looks at you with this kind of slightly quivering, wild look. Yeah, yes, she says. I'm looking for McNulty. I've had a gone good word that he'll be here. The woman, like, studies you two for a moment and then steps, like, out from behind the counters. Um, and you notice she's wearing, like, a dirtied, long white robe of sorts. Um, and, like, she, she looks you up and down and, like, looks you up and down as well, Cavern. And, come in, come in, close the door, close the door. She kind of nods. Um, a bit kind of frenetically to herself and she goes, yeah, there must be them, must be them. Um, and then she looks to you and this this way, uh, McNulty said that he was sending for help. We, we, we need to carry the supplies downstairs. 
Right. Okay, then. Uh, can we give an and? Yeah, this way, this way, she says. And she kind of scur literally scurries through the door at the back of the room into like the back area. Um, as we go, I'm just going to sort of like, under my breath, whisper to Cavern, like, watch yourself here. He may seem a bit kooky, but he's dangerous. It's more like unhinged. And that ones always are. So as you follow her into the back area, um, you see her sort of like closing uh, the lid of a chest and there's you hear a click um, of a lock. And she sort of like, as you enter, she oh, ah! turns around with a, a, a jump and as if she forgotten that you were there. Um, and then she, oh, this, this, we need to carry it down, downstairs. We, uh, you, d you, don't shake it, don't shake it. It's very, very delicate. Okay, you must be careful. Are you, are you going to be careful? Of course, I'm always careful. Good, good, good. Um, I'm, I'm going to f f finish, finish packing up here. She says, um, and as she steps to the side to sort of like show you the chest that she wants carried, her stepping out the way also reveals what appears to be. Um, so it's, it's effectively the large kind of stone table that clearly once upon a time like dough would have been rolled out on and on it is a dismembered body <gasps> you notice there is a hole in the poor person's chest roughly where the heart should be hurry up hurry up she says and you see her sort of like draw a cleaver and sort of like she like walk up to the side of this cadaver and to sort of like sizing it up and just and she's like humming to herself a little joyous tune. I think Cavern's gonna say under his breath, he's gonna go This mad Oh, this is this is new. It was never like this. As you say this, as you're like whispering to each other, she looks up to you and Don't worry, don't worry. We bottled up the ghost. <laughs> oh, that's uh that's good to know. Uh just down here, you say? Is that where McDulty is? Yes, yes, down down the stairs. Follow the chute. Yes, yes, down the stairs. Yes. Careful, careful. It, it's very delicate. <laughs> right. Okay. Um gonna start making my way down. Um can I see what's in the box? Like uh, you it... can't now that she's closed it. But oh. as you pick it up, you hear sort of like the jingles and chinkles of something like glass in. That you assume it's glass stuff in there of some sort. Um, but there's also some sort of like solid objects as you lift up. You feel them kind of move slightly in the box. Um, are the two of you taking stuff downstairs? <laughs> yes. yes, down into the murder basement. <laughs> Great. Off we go. Whose bloody <laughs> idea was this? <laughs> Yours. <laughs> Magpie and Atta. Uh -huh. <laughs> you've like you were in a separate group away from Frida and Cavern, and sure. you've just watched them sort of like walk in, uh -huh. and then as you were approaching, the door has boom, like closed. Like the door to the bakery is closed, and you're like, because you're supposed mm. supposedly following in behind them. Uh, but you're stood now outside this bakery. What do you do? Oh, I don't like this. Um, should we see if there's a window or something that we can jimmy open? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. We'll just go around the back. Come on. Come on, I do this all the okay. time. Come on. <laughs> okay. Lead around the back of the building. Right. So are you kind of going to try and infiltrate? Yes. Another point, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, tell me how, mm. like, what what attribute are you using to get in? I mean, sounds like, like a tinker. Could be a tinker if 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 Atta want tempt a tinker with tinker the windows. is a bit more. Yeah, I guess yeah. if things are locked, then I can try and unlock. Do yeah. bakeries usually have? No, they wouldn't have like a. Well, maybe they'd have a cold storage. I don't really know. Um, like a cellar. Is there like a hatch? 
Um, mm, good point. We've if, got the blueprints, that, so you'll know. What's yeah. that? Oh yeah, the blueprints. Yeah. So yeah. if if you want that to be the case, then yeah, you, yeah. you can see that I, there I love is that a, idea. There's yeah. an access hatch directly to is the it, basement. Is it locked, or can we just get in? Uh, if you're tinkering, and then yes, it's locked. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> keep a, can you keep a lookout and I'll try and get mm -hmm. it open? Sure. Uh, um, do I need to add... I wants to help. Oh, I, I can definitely. I think, I, I think I'll, I'll... Is that one stress to help or two? One stress to help, one extra dice or extra effect. My, I'd have to choose my loadout to get the lock picks right, so... Uh, I believe so. You probably... Yeah. Oh yeah, so as a point, as an aside, everyone mentally figure out which load you're taking. Mm. <laughs> Um, yeah, so lock picks, so tinkering tools, I guess. Uh, yeah. Think, yeah. So that's yeah one of your one of your loadout, unless Magpie wants to I tinker. I mean, I can tinker because I've my my fine lock picks are zero on my loadout, so I'll definitely have those with me. I've only got yeah. one tinker, so if you could help me with my tinker, yeah. that would be really helpful. I can absolutely help you with your tinker so and I'm, take a stress for I'm sure. Adding one D to my tinker, right? So, just to pause. So, the lock in front of you, though it's rusty, it looks quite robust. Fundamentally, okay. this is a tier two lock. Uh, okay. So, if you're you're fine, um, like, so you you're two steps below standard. Yeah. Your fine takes it to one. So currently, although as an infiltrator, does that? Do I really care? Oh, very good. No, no, you don't. You don't at all. Okay. Um, in which case, yeah, you get an extra level of effect. Okay, excellent. Um, so this is. Are you are you lock picking and Atta helping? Yeah, I am lock picking. I'm adding one okay. one die for Atta helping. Yep. So Atta and takes the stress. Is it risky magpie. standard? Is that... So this because of your fine lock picks, it'll be a risky greater. Oh, fab. Okay. Six. Okay. Boom. Um, yeah, so Magpie, you pull out your lockpicks and there's, like, you have to scrape away some of the, the corrosion, but eventually there's a... <laughs> and the large padlock kind of pops open. Um, and as it falls away, you kind of kind of grab it before it bonks into anything and makes a, a loud noise. Um, and the access hatch to the basement swings open and the two of you are in. Love it. Down we go. Okay. Very sneakily. Um, you, so as you emerge, uh, well, <laughs> Frida and Cavern, you're like, to me, to you down the stairs really carefully with this crate. And like, because it's making some worrying clonks as you, every time you take a step. And like, it's, it's almost pitch black going down this stairwell. Um, like these curved stairs down to, like the basement area um and as you get to the bottom um there's this loud kind of like clonk and a few moments later like the room is filled with light as like the trap door uh, like a trap door to the outside is opened and as you two presumably freeze um you notice magpie and atta poke their heads in there you are uh, and yeah uh magpie and atta you see cavern and Cavern and Frida carrying a chest, probably looking a bit pale. Yeah. <laughs> what have you got there? Oh, my bad business, I think. Mm, very um, bad business. It, that's is that what we're looking for? Not the kind of bad business we've just seen. <laughs> I meant in the chest. I'm not sure, but uh, we've got to go meet uh, Caleb. Is there any way we can? Hmm. We've had a look at the blueprints, haven't we? Yeah. So we so know are... do we know where the like the storehouse. So yeah, you are now in like the basement. Um, so like this is storage and, and so on and so forth. And from the blueprints, like you are both at one end. Um, the room carries on maybe you know like thirty or so feet into gloom, um, which is slightly now illuminated from the outdoor light, right. um, but you know that the extension stretches on beyond it um okay. but you'd have to kind of yeah head yeah. head in further to see what's in the extension right i mean can we give them this chest and see if they can open it while yeah. we mm. go on in sure. yeah that's pretty good idea. caleb don't need to know we got it <laughs> no no okay uh okay. okay in which case um 
so, uh, Atter and Magpie, if you, if one of you roll me a tinker for, for the locks for this bit, for the, for the chest. Do you want me to do that again, or...? Do. I'm happy to help you again if you want to. Sure. Do. Have you got Have you got the stress for it? You're you're getting. I've got. You're the stress it for up. it. <laughs> but I can. I did okay. manage to get rid of it a fair okay. bit. So. Okay. Fair. 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 Uh, so yeah, uh, tinker with my fine lock picks with yep. Atta's help. So, same as before with infiltrator ignoring. So it'll be a risky greater. It's okay. a four. Oh, nice. Well, it's partial okay. success. Well, it's so better than a red. It's. Yeah. So yeah, we'll go true. with the reduce effect, but yeah, that's okay. still more than enough that you hear sure. a satisfying click, and the the chest opens. Um, as you peer inside, uh, Frida Cavern, like you're already kind of moving further on into the darkness. Was it? Was it? <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, I'm just going to say to Magpie and um, Atta, I think, considering what we've just seen upstairs, and trust me, it's not pretty might be worth if you to sort of try and stay out of sight um but keep your ears peeled we'll uh we'll shout if we need you okay okay but otherwise we'll meet you back here hopefully with some uh some more loot good luck okay. um cavern and frida then as you head uh further in you see, like, emerging out of the, the gloom, like the darkness, these kind of wooden beams that look newer than everything else. It looks like they've been inst installed more recently. And you suspect that these are the supporting beams that the blueprint shows had to be put in to kind of knock the wall out. But between each of the beams is what is effectively like a drape curtain of sorts, okay. kind of obscuring what's beyond it. Uh, what are you two doing for light sources? Because it's pretty much pitch black now. Have any of you brought uh, any lighting? Lanterns are one yes. load? I did. <laughs> okay, so Frida, you pull the lantern from your from your pouch and as you... <laughs> and it's, uh, it illuminates. And you know what? We're going to go for the real horror vibes. It's a uh, bullseye lantern so you've only got like a circular field of vision it's not all encompassing I'm, uh, I'm not gonna lie Catherine I'll be honest I'm shitting it right now so if we get through this then you and I we're uh we're going for a proper night out yeah we're going for a proper drink after this none of that mushroom shit we're going for the whiskey that sounds like a promise and I'll keep that Meanwhile, in the keel hall, <laughs> Algernon swilling his own whiskey about, going, oh yes, a very fine year. <laughs> I would actually like to propose a flashback before you okay. surprise us with anything in the basement. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so I've been posted up at the keel hall because I would quite like to uh, bump into um, Odalmere Oran. Yes. Um, because well, I know that Frida ran into him there before. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You, well, you would have had to have kind of arranged a meeting um, for him to, to be there again. But yes, uh, you arrive and there is a, a private booth up on the, on the first kind of landing. And yeah, as you kind of enter in, um, Odomus gives you a nod and gestures to the, the bench. Um, I sit down and I'm shuffling my little pack of uh, playing cards. Odalmers Oran, a pleasure. The uh, alderman of a thriving economy. Thank you. Uh, it's it's good to finally meet you, uh, Algernon. I have heard many good things about the Cadwallada family. Not my parents, though, I assume. Uh, would you care to pick a card? The sprite laughs and sort of like readjusts his and like takes the monocle off and kind of cleans it on a hanky and then puts that back in his pocket oh go on then he says and he draws one um, and stuck to the back of it is the note that we found in Tovarian's hand that says uh, the veil is failing and 
Odalmurs spies it and just kind of does a long, slow nod and then looks up to you. And there's a suddenly a new look in his eyes, one of anticipation. Um, I take that back from him. We can be candid, Mr. Cadwalder. Yes, I'm interested in uh, being candid with you, but f my first priority is Mr. McNulty. I believe you spoke to an associate of mine about him. I did. I understand uh, he's lost his chain for various transgressions against your guilds, and I was wondering if you could enlighten me as to what we might be getting into. Well, of course. It would seem that Mr. McNulty, with his long and uh, established history as a workhouse, a, a workhouse owner. In more recent times, he has fallen in with uh, an unsavory crowd. Tell me, Mr. Cabalder, do you know much of the Hollow? I've come across the name. Who would have thought that, for all of the tragedy that Alicia has experienced that it would create such madness these scientists they could have achieved great things but instead they they've descended into lunacy it's shocking to see what it is they're trying to achieve if in fact they even know themselves Right, and you think Mr. McNulty has come across them via the scripture he so proudly displays on his face? Well, I am not a religious man, Mr. Cabalada, but I have been told that the scriptures that Mr. McNulty has put great faith in are extreme. It is there is talk of transformation, there is talk of adaptation, there is talk of evolving unto a higher form of life. So perhaps, bereft of his chain and bereft of his church, he might turn to those with similar goals. Let's be short, Oran. What have you sent my friends into? If any of them end up on a slab, you'll be following them. <clears throat> well, the the bakery that they are currently investigating is a storage unit for these deluded fools. And no more else. It is, I have not sent them into the, the den of the beast, no. We're not sure where that is yet. I'm sure your friends have seen their fair share of death. I can't imagine it'll be any worse than that. And what items are you asking them to retrieve? The Hollow have made a point of collecting a number of magical artifacts for their experiments. From what I gather from my informants, some of those artifacts have fallen into your possession. I don't know where you've stashed them in the city. That's your secret to keep. But presumably you have a workshop of some sort, wherever you call home, that were filled with items that once belonged to the Hollow. I appreciate that perhaps the Hollow may have some bad blood against you and your friends, but... I trust in your capabilities that you will avoid the majority of the danger that presents itself. Do not uh, test my patience for blackmail, Mr. Oran. You seem to know a lot about my current occupations, mm. and I don't appreciate being on this side of it. I assure you, Mr. Cadwallader, that it is my intention that we both benefit from this mutually beneficial arrangement. Quite. 
But bear in mind that destruction can also be mutual. I have foreseen fire, and I'm not afraid to fight fire with fire. The the sprite nods, um, and it's a nod of like there's suddenly like a an almost predatory look in his eyes. One that says, "Agreed." Uh, is there anything else you're looking for the flashback? Because at least now you know that there's no, like, chained monsters down there. <laughs> okay. Um, in which case, yeah, we won't call that any stress, but we flash back to the the basement, um, and Frida, as you kind of pull aside one of the drapes, um, you see shelves and shelves of what you can only describe as you kind of swing your lantern backwards and forwards of arcane apparatus like it looks very similar to the sort of apparatus you've got back at Cabal of the Manor that you see um, Atta kind of tinkering with when she's brewing potions or kind of making things there's kind of there's instruments and tools and there's beakers and there's pipes and there's kind of shapes there that you see a couple of the round orbs like you picked up from the Amringer job like this place is full of them but hanging from the middle of the room like this extended area is what appears to be the upper half of a suit of armor. Freedy, you look at it and think that's a really weird helmet because normally helmets would have like a vision slit or like holes for you to see out of. But this thing just has a large circular um, viewing port, but it's glass. Cavern. I would argue that you've got enough outer worldly knowledge, like knowledge from outside Alicia, to be like, that looks like like a deep sea diving suit of sorts. It's that sort of idea. It looks very, very cumbersome, very heavy. Um, and it looks all encompassing, but it's only the top half. But you can also see that there are a number of sort of like pipes and wires attached to this suit. But it looks like it's been hanging there for quite some time. But yeah. As you kind of appear at this armor, you also see all of the other artifacts. Like, it's, this is a treasure hall of contraband. Well, we've definitely got enough to please Dorothea and then some. Right. Yeah. Is there anyone else? Is it just uh, empty? Well, you know, there's no one about. There's there's no one about. Um, Atta and uh, Magpie, what are you... We were having a look in that chest, weren't we? In the chest, of course. Um, as you open it up, inside the chest is another like lockbox um, and a smaller glass orb similar to that of the Amlinger Jog. Hmm. But this one is glowing with a soft blue glow. And what appears to be, it's like a, a cone with handles on the round edge made of gold studded with gems almost looks like a uh, a bellows right does any of it look like what we're looking for or i mean it all like the fact that orb is glowing indicates it's probably magical um mm. you i mean you, at a glance the bellows thing looks expensive <laughs> for maybe like you can't see what it's for can I so, figure it out then but I yeah, might figure it out can I with, try? A, with an atun I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go reg, reg's roll I don't I'm not gonna yeah. push myself I've got three pips mm. so okay. maybe it'll be okay okay <laughs> just a risky standard risk a standard Ooh. Hey. Mm. okay you glance at the the conical bellows type apparatus i say it's got two kind of vertical handles connecting to this cone so the point points forward but you notice that on the the tip of the cone like it folds back and it's actually like a nozzle and like as you investigate it 
um, or as you peer at it, you realize that, oh, that, that like red gem on the flat side of the cone, like on the base of the cone, oh yeah, that's a, so that's an arcane fire gem, uh, and this thing is basically like a flamethrower, whatever. Um, because the orb, as you peer at it, you see that the glow in the glowing shimmer inside, like a face, a ghostly face slides past, and you. That's a ghost in a jar. They bottled the ghost. They bottled the ghost. I press my face right so close up to the bottle. <laughs> Got that poor ghost. Um, <laughs> it's and then, it through the glass. The it's like it. it's the anime thing where it's. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the the face, like you, uh, as you press your nose against this orb, um, you, like, a, as you do this magpie, you kind of see this face materialize, and you get a chill as it, like, it, you haven't seen one, but you imagine mm. this is what a ghost looks like, and you mm. think back to the sounds you heard. Sure. But the face looks scared. And it like shrinks away, and it almost into it was almost childlike in the way that it kind of recoils and tries to shield itself. I, I don't think they like that, Atta. Oh. You've never known a ghost to not be violent and murderous. This is strange. This is, this is real, real strange. Have you seen a ghost do that before? Uh, no. Very odd. Um. Yeah. So the you've got you've got a ghost in a jar. Great. Uh, you've got a flamethrower. Are we um, are we taking all this stuff or? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Put it your face, Come on. <laughs> Come on. Right. Okay. Um. Can we see how the other two are doing? Are they... Sure. Um, well, Kevin, gathering up. Items. Yeah, Kevin and Frida, are you just sort of like <laughs> stomping back in the suit with loads of items in the room? <laughs> yeah, like are you? So I guess the question is, are you taking? Um, I will let you choose how much additional load you take, and this may take you beyond, like, to medium or heavy. Um, but then obviously, the more you take, the more noticeable it's going to be if you get stopped. So between the two of you, um, like, give me a load number. Mm. So between you, you've already got, like, three load base. So how much extra are you both taking? Oof. So before we start, like, pilfering, mm -hmm. this room, is it just a dead end or does it lead further on? It is a dead end. It does genuinely look like a storage area, but, like, well... Right. So where's McNulty? You've seen he's not here. Okay, right. Well, could we have arranged um, transport for all this stuff in the form of maybe like a covered, an inconspicuous looking covered cart that we could have parked around the back? Hmm. So I'm, I'm going to argue that's, well, it's one stress and a, a consort. Consort or sway. Like, you'll have to find a driver who's got a cart small enough to fit through the alleyways of Rookridge, who's reliably going to be there on time, who's discreet, etc., etc. So, you tell me how you're finding this person. Okay. Um, well, when I was out looking for bodyguards um, yeah. amongst my, my sort of fighting ring colleagues, mm -hmm. um, for, for poor Eric in the Spectre. Um, I'm sure I can convince a couple of them on, you know, promise of good drink afterwards that, sure. um, you know, if you pay drinks that they could come and, you know, sort of act as getaway drivers. Okay. Uh, in which case, as you know, yeah, roll me a consult. Would you like some help? I can spend some stress and give you another... Dice. Hi, you, you can uh, flutter those pretty eyelashes of yours. Up. So was Cavern with you during this <laughs> flashback? Yeah, go on then. <laughs> okay, right, Cavern. So, yeah, were you there? Right. Yep. Yeah. So, so uh, plus Cavern one, takes 
what is it risky standard or so this would be a controlled standard controlled standard and it's plus one mm -hmm. oh that's all right okay hmm. i will say you found the driver you found who's got the cart magpie and atta you hear like the clip clop and snorting of a hog to arriving near but like near the the access hatch that you were at uh, with a carp so you know you've got your getaway vehicle um the minor complication is that as you hear that um you hear is, is everything going all right down there from down the stair from up the stairs <sighs> Yes, yeah, so this has gone through my okay. head that she's going to be, if you were seen coming in, <clears throat> she's going to expect to see you leave again. So mm -hmm. I would suggest we do a quick job of loading up. Maybe Cavern can run some interference and keep her occupied <laughs> yep, <laughs> while, we, while, we, while right. we load up and then you can go up the stairs and Atta and I will take the cart away. Because th so, if you just disappear, she's going to know exactly who took yeah. the stuff. Yeah, agreed. But if um, she sees you go out with nothing, none of the stuff, that's going to help. Tell you what, exactly that plan, but let me go up to her while um, Cavern okay. helps load okay. up. Okay, so in which case, Cavern and Frida, the question still sounds, how much load are you taking? Um, mm. I'm going to take... Uh, is there anything in that room that would appeal to my violent sensibilities? There's lots of glass. Flamethrower. <laughs> <laughs> You see a sheathed sword that's got a very fancy scabbard. Mm. I could learn to sword fight. <laughs> it's not really inconspicuous, though, is it? A sword, yeah. unless you do the Wonder Woman <laughs> down it's, the back of the... It's not really something I could uh, I could hide, is it? I mean, we could take it if you want it. We could take it away on the cart. If there's room, then yes. But sure. it's it's a vanity thing. So, yeah. Okay. But for now, I'll, I'll go back upstairs empty-handed. Sure. Um, so, yeah, everyone else, what, is there, how much? Is there any reason not to just take as much as we can? Time. <laughs> Time. Time. So, and it's very conspicuous, if you like. Ka -chunk, ka -chunk, ka -chunk, ka -chunk, okay. Ka -chunk. Like, it's all going in the cart, so then it's a case of, like, how much, how full is the cart. Right. Mm. Uh, okay, tell you what, we'll make it easy. Four o'clock, six o'clock, or eight o'clock. Oh, okay. For loading the cart. Shall we? Shall we say six? Everything's yeah. gone smoothly so far, so six. let's go six. Six o'clock. Yeah. Okay. So six o'clock goes in for the cart. Uh, cool. Okay. Um. So. Uh, as Frida heads upstairs, uh, Magpie, Atta, and Cavern, tell me how you're using one of your abilities to choose what to take and transporting it to the cart. Can I be like a like a magical divining rod? <laughs> point. Beep, beep, yeah. beep, 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 <laughs> Yeah, um, that sounds good. I could push myself. Ooh. <laughs> Why not? Uh, for effect or dice? Um, maybe I want effect, because I do get three dice, but for some reason I'm feeling nervous about this roll. Um, and also, while you're thinking about it, uh, Algonon, if there's any additional flashbacks you would like to do in so much as perhaps probing Odalmurse for what might be down there. Yeah, maybe. I, um... I might give him another little consort role just to see if he gives me any more guidance. Sure, 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 sure. Um, okay, well, we'll do the we'll do the looting roles first, and yeah, if you want to jump in with the foresight help actions, um, just shout. Oh, oh yeah, I can use foresight, can't I? Um, but yeah. Uh, so Atta, are you you're pushing yourself? Are you going for a fourth dice? Or are you going for extra effect? It's too stress, right? To do stress, some yes. kind of yeah. Okay. Oh my god, sorry. <laughs> 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 the camera does weird oh things. Um <laughs> I'm gonna go for more effect. I'm gonna see if I can get okay. uh, more more effects. 
Yep. Uh, do I change it to great then? Uh, so yes, risky, uh, risky greater. Oh, Ooh. Ooh, crit! A crit. Double six. Okay. Uh, yum, yum, so yum. that is <laughs> a crit is five segments on a clock. So yes. as as you you kind of step in and you like your eyes <gasps> open <laughs> like you're a you're a little goblin kid in a sweet shop. Um and yeah, you start rifling through and just like yes, no, no, yes, no, <laughs> just sort of like discarding things that aren't good enough uh, and you yeah, you manage to fish out the really really juicy stuff. Um magpie or cavern? Um I would like to make an argument for using my finesse because mm -hmm. I am rifling things very quickly, picking them up to have a quick look and sort of put them back down without breaking them and sure, sure, sure. You know, just sort of rifling through it all as quickly as possible to select the most appropriate things. That sounds good. Roll me and can a... I push myself as well to get indeed. an extra you... die? Yeah. Is that... And for, for one stress, is that? Uh, two stress. Two stress. Okay. Oh! Mm. Thank okay. Another All six. the good rolls are coming in. <laughs> Thank goodness. Just when we need them. We got them out the way in the yeah. you know, information gathering. Okay. Uh, well, so for better or worse, um, Cavern, the, the clock has already finished. Um, so, Magpie, you um, you start sifting through and um, like you're able to find stuff that looks shiny and... <laughs> Looks uh, magical. Like appealing. <laughs> like, it's the sort of thing where you're like, what would I like to steal if I had the choice? And you're just, picking up the expensive <laughs> looking stuff. Okay. Um, and Cavern, <laughs> fundamentally, you're, you've been relegated to the mule as like things just get packed. Pack <laughs> you, you get the sword and the armor to transport yeah. you to yeah. lug it all. I just, so, um, it's not really helping with a roll, but I'm just thinking about uh, my foresight visions. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, from before about uh, just fire and destruction and the city and flames and I'm I'm thinking <laughs> about that flamethrower yeah <laughs> it's not something I really want in the hands of the church mm-hmm yeah she um, doesn't so have to get it it's in, it's but also you definitely right don't want it in the hands of the hollow either <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Maybe it so could I... just be in the hands of a just, little goblin. Uh, just, just, yeah, just think how much safer of... it would be at Cadwalla de Manor. <laughs> it's so <laughs> trustworthy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think I um, I've probably shared my my vision, my fiery apocalypse vision yeah. with the crew. Um, just to put that in the back of everyone's minds when they're picking, if they have to pick between things. Sure, sure, sure. Um, well, let's. I mean, off the back of this, we, yeah, we'll we'll have a. Uh, we'll, we'll, I'll put together a list, and there'll be like, we'll be able to pick what what we want to um, have taken, what you want to keep in, in the future. So, but if you wanted to not hand over the flamethrower to um, the faith, you could choose to keep it. You could choose to dispose of it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, Frida, you head upstairs, and the, the like the, the slightly unhinged woman um, kind of looks to you and, "Where's your friend? Where's your friend?" Don't worry, he's uh, he's got more delicate hands than me, and this is a very delicate job. So uh, I've uh, I've left him downstairs. He's he's just uh, getting things prepared. We have to. We have to be very, very careful with it. There's, there's a, there's a lot of delicate stuff going on down there, and we, we, we have to make sure that that every everyone is is is, re is ready for is ready for the for for for, for the for the for the, for the rising. The rising. Yeah, yeah. Yes, the rising. Of course. Speaking of delicate work, you know, this is this looks like some very delicate work you've been doing here, and I yeah, sort she's of gesture. In blood. <laughs> gesture over to the dismembered body yes. and it's like did you uh did you get everything you need yes 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 we've 
we've already extracted the we've already extracted the soul and and we we can we can start our start our experiments on on uh, on this new on this new subject um so so yes we're, we're very 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 happy um but yeah it it yeah, the, the the physical body we have to has to be rendered into small enough chunks for to 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 avoid detection it's, yeah, you can't let anyone know what, what's what's happening before before it it, it happens. Um, the, 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 the kindling would be very upset if we let slip what was happening. Right. Yes, we wouldn't want the want the kindling find uh, finding out. So, um, how long have you been in this line of work? <laughs> she looks at you, and if you want to, kind of delay her uh, and kind of keep her talking uh, I think you're going to have to roll something for that oh, I, <laughs> and I try and distract with like I'm just you know I'm I'm always interested in in artistry and it this just looks like artistry to me again gesturing towards the <laughs> desecrated <laughs> corpse mm -hmm. um, and yeah I'm trying to sort of like I guess Flatter her a little bit. Not very good at flattering, though. But yeah, mm. yeah. All right, sway, 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 sway is good. We can do a sway. What, uh, what position and effect? Uh, this is risky standard. Okay. Oh gosh. So you, you still in all... <gasps> Can oh, I resist, no. please? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me let me tell you what it is. Um, she <laughs> looks to you as you start to kind of idly chit chat and she just stares at you she freezes like her eyes fixated on you and then she starts no no no, no. starts shaking her head no 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 time for talk no time for talk T talking leads to idleness talking leads to leak secrets the, the and, and the, the the kindling would not be pleased no 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 more no more discussions you you must finish your job you must you are you, are you done where's your friend where's your friend I'm, I'm going to go and check on your friend uh you have lost this opportunity Okay. Um, um, I don't want, want to take that risk, and I'm going to block her path. Okay, mm -hmm. so roll me a resist. Ooh. Ooh. Um, is that a resolve? Yeah, because uh, uh, the, the thing. Of sway. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Gosh. Oh, oh, oh block no. now. Oh, oh, you suffer three stress. Okay. <gasps> okay. But um, you kind of body block her. Um, and she sort of like stops, looks at your hand a bit confused, and then looks up to you. And there's a flash of anger in her eyes. And then she, she's got a cleaver. Oh, oh yes, um, yeah, uh, busy, busy, must keep busy. And she kind of peels away and kind of carries on pottering around the room. She's still not talking to you, but at least she's not going downstairs. But she, yeah, you you resist the like the situation getting worse. Um, and again, if you wanted to just kind of slowly back away because she's um, now putting like chunks of meat into a barrel. Yeah. Right, I uh, I better get on with it. Like you said, idleness uh, is uh, it's bad form. And I'm just going to back down the stairs but keeping my eye on her. Okay, yeah. She's oblivious to you as you descend back down. Um, and as you return, you see that uh, Cavern just kind of emerges from that access hatch, just <laughs> having just loaded up the last crate of items. And unless any of you want to do any more rummaging, you have a healthy stash loaded yeah. on the cart upstairs. Scarpa. Okay. Uh, do you remember to close the hatch. Oh god, yes. <laughs> Can we relock yeah. the hatch? Is it possible to that's, relock that's, the padlock? That's absolutely the fine. So. Um, in which case, as Magpie and Atta um, kind of jump onto the back of the, the cart that's patiently waiting, now looks um, a bit kind of lower to the ground with all the stuff that you've hauled onto it. Um, Cavern and Frida, you leave through the front. Um, you make your. The, the cart makes its way back out of um, Rookridge. Uh, and I presume you're heading towards Abbott's Gate. I reckon, should we, do we have time to like... To rifle through? Yeah, to basically go to uh, Cardwalla and uh, and sort of, you know, 
make decisions. Sure. Okay. Well, in which case, in the interests of time, um, as you make your way away from uh, this kind of holdout, um, replete with loads of magical loot, um, we will call it there. <laughs> and the the sifting and the delivery uh, and the coin getting we can do in effect in the downtime session. Nice. But nice, nice. Um, yeah, your cart trundles off, um, leaving behind a wittering. Lorivar woman in this bakery, um, blissfully who's blissfully unaware that um, she's just been robbed blind. <laughs> My and... gosh, <laughs> that was a cheerful bakery come human abattoir, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Is that uh, part of the famous hollow experimentation that we just witnessed? Mm. Well, who who knows? Look forward. Uh, like you were very kind to us on that. Uh, DM Dan. <laughs> Congratulations, everyone. He doesn't want us all to die yet. <laughs> it's only episode like five. Congratulations on completing episode five. Um, yes, you found some seedy secrets, some dark secrets in the underbelly of Alicia. Um, and we'll see how that pans out. Um, so, yeah, next time we'll do. We'll do the XP, uh, we'll do the downtime, we'll do the item sifting. We'll have an inventory management episode. Um, and yeah, kind of go from there. So, uh, if you enjoyed this uh, rather spoopy mission, uh, then make sure to hit the like button and uh, comment down below on the magic item that you think the crew missed that would have been really, really fun for them to have stolen. Um, and if you want to see what items they have, they are going to keep, uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel and uh, hit the bell icon for notifications when we release new episodes because we release them very regularly. We don't want you to miss them uh, because we love you that much. So, <laughs> thank you everyone uh, for playing. Thank you everyone for watching. See you next time. Bye. Bye bye. bye. <laughs>